To Katie Tchaikovsky, the former federal prosecutor. Katie, what do you think on this? Well, I think you're right that there is a lot of skepticism from the conservative justices on the court. And really, the law strongly disfavors classifications on the basis of race. So in order to really uphold these admissions processes that consider race as an affirmative factor, these universities, according to the court, need to show the compelling interest. And I think that's where the sticking point is here, because the compelling interest of considering race cannot just be racial diversity itself, but really an overall arching diversity on the campus, which is legally acceptable. So I think the balance here is how do you achieve overall diversity without without explicitly considering race, which is what the petitioners are, are asking for. So I think we are likely to see the affirmative action policies largely overhauled. But again, the, the arguments have been very, very interesting to listen to. If the Supreme Court, I'm making this leap and correct me if I'm wrong, says, all right, there shouldn't be a sort of an inherent built-in affirmative action bias here. Uh, wouldn't that change the makeup of hirings and, and uh, even selections beyond schools to offices? Isn't that the fear that this extends way beyond? Well, certainly that is the fear that if your universities are not diverse, then people, positions in society will likely not be diverse. But um, there's actually counter arguments to that in a lot of research that shows that non-racial factors in making these admissions decisions often result in more diversity in some ways when you're looking at socioeconomic status, for instance, and certain upbringings and backgrounds that are not race specific that you can, in fact, and do, in fact, in many settings, achieve a significant amount of diversity without explicitly deducting points or adding points on the basis solely of, of someone's race. Now, a lot of these are going to math elements and a certain percentage that the university colleges will have for uh, you know, any ethnic group, uh, even down to gender. Uh, so this is a set percentage. If, if, if the court were to take this on to its extreme, would all of that end? Or is it, is it not that black and white? What do you expect likely changes here? Again, this is a 6-3 conservative court. I think that I would expect that that race would be explicitly prohibited from consideration as an independent factor in any admissions decisions. And of course, there are somewhat kind of similar topics like a family's background, if, if people came from a um, slave background and whether they could have that considered. Things of this sort are still on the table, I think, in terms of the interpretation of these. But as, as it stands right now, these two universities explicitly and openly admit that they consider just someone's race without the experiences that may or may not be associated with that as a determinative factor. And in some cases, it's extremely determinative to the exclusion of, as we've seen, other racial minority groups. In, in many cases. You know, uh, if they rule on this the, to the degree some suspect they might, Katie, I mean, they have not been afraid to take on historic and controversial cases uh, and very divisive cases, uh, almost by design. What do you make of that? Well, I think that's absolutely right. And in this case, I don't even know that this is so extraordinary. The cases in the past where the Supreme Court has said that some consideration of race as a factor um, have always had a time limit. There was always a discussion that this wouldn't be indeterminate and that at some point it wouldn't, know, wouldn't be necessary in these decisions. But at this point, I think the Supreme Court is really asking the universities to show specifically what the compelling interest is, how this benefits education and the overall purpose of the universities to consider the factor of race. And I don't know that they've gotten a clear answer. Justice Thomas kept asking specifically that question about the educational benefits, because it needs to be a compelling interest in order to, to classify people on the basis of race. And I think that's the sticking point for many of these conservative justices, is what exactly are we achieving, not just overall diversity, but just explicit racial diversity, which in, in the past has been not able to be considered legally. And so I'm not sure that they've, they've reached that high hurdle of showing the compelling interest here. Got it. And I think the court would be fine to, to, to over, overturn that. Interesting. Well, watch very, very closely. Katie, thank you very much. Katie Chikowsky following these developments.